Welcome back. In the previous video, we created our login form and register form and we're able to render it as we see here. So what we're going to do in this video is we want to handle forms in React and we're going to use a package called Formic, which is the most popular one when it comes to form handling in React. When it comes to real life application, definitely we need a tool to get it done, right? We're going to use what is called Formic. So let's search for Formic, right? So Formic, it says that build forms in React without tears. And it makes our life easier than building everything from scratch. So let's click on that and then let's see the installation, right? So I'll take you through how it's been done. I use Formic even for my clients and my personal project as well. So let's scroll down and then let's install the package. If you're using yarn, it's yarn add formic. So let's go back to our terminal and then let's shut down the server, right? Let's shut down the server. I'm here, sorry. Yeah, this one. Shut down my server, clear my console, and then let me paste it here. And the next thing I'm going to use called Yup, right? Even that one is going to help us to handle errors, right? Error handling. So install what is called Yup as well, as you can see. So let's hit enter. These two packages is what we need for now. So what is installing? Let's see if it's finished. There are no errors. Yes, it's installing for us. Let's have some patience and almost done. There we go, done. So let's clear the console and run our client. Cool. So let's see how we're going to handle it in our React, right? So make sure that you are inside your login component, sorry, login component like that. So let me close the one I don't need. So always, um, let's say focus on the form part, okay, form here. So for Formic, first of all, you need to create, you need to bring in the Formic, Formic hook, right? So let's import the Formic here, import, use Formic, Formic from, from Formic, as that. So this use Formic gives us utility methods and functions <coughs> Sorry, that makes our life easier. For example, um, when you want to handle it on change and on submit and on blur, this API makes our life easier. So first and first, we need to do is that make, because it's a hook, we need to create it inside your component, right? So let's comment here and say form, formic form, right? And then let's initialize it as this so const let's call this one formic assign the hook as that use formic as that so this use formic if you console log formic you can see that we have all the utility methods and functions for example on submit and handle change and other stuff so let's go back to our terminal console log here and then let's check the console that we see here so let's go to the login component rather instead because you're on the login component and if you render or cannot with parties of one defined okay i got it so it means that if you call the use form you need to pass in some configuration okay so i'll show you that as you proceed so for this use for me you need to pass in some details right one is your initial values okay so pass in as an object and then first thing is what your initial values right initial values are going to be the things that you want to send to the front end so for the login we need what is called email and password so email here and then password as that first thing is done and this use formic so now we can console log formic and you console log formic you can see that we have all the utility methods that can that will make our life easier so let's check the console and then let's refresh it and now as you can see what do i have 
I have a bunch of methods that Formic has for us. So for example, daily errors, and then what I'm going to use is few of them. You can even reset your form, and you're going to use this a lot handle submit to submit our form. This one and handle blur and unchange as you proceed. Okay, so now that we know what Formic has for us, all these methods is given to us automatically. Then we can go ahead and then implement the logic. All right, cool. So now we want to bind this email into its respective text input, right? So let's scroll down and then line number 41 where the form starts on my code. And now as you can see here, we have first input field, this one. Okay, and here, let's pass in some props. Sorry, where's my email? Here. Yeah. For this form, we're going to pass in some props, right? So one, we need to pass in what is called value, right? So value is going to be what? The formic that we assigned, okay? And on the formic, we have what is called values. And on values, we have access to the individual properties like email and password that we assigned inside the initial values. Cool. So the next one going to be what? Your on change. So when a user click on this input, we need to bind <coughs> the form input. So formic dot um, handle change. As you can see, now we have it automatically. And then the field is called email right and the next gonna be the on blur right on blur means that when a user moves his ma uh, cursor from the form for example if it is supposed to be a required field for so for this on blur you're gonna tell us that hey this field is required so on blur gonna be for make as as you can guess for make dot handle blur and this is also given to us automatically by Formic. Okay, so now we have these two. The same thing applies to the email, the password, right? This so we can copy these ones and then come to the password field line number 58 on my code here, right? Let's paste the one we did for the email. And all what we need is the field. So here we change the email to password. Change the email to what password okay so now we have bind these two so how can we submit so inside the use formic here who we pass a second argument called on submit <coughs> sorry and this on submit is we, we assigned a function to it a callback function like that so here inside here we have access to all the values inside the input so here let's try to console.log console.log the values right and the last thing is let me remove this one for now and the last thing is let's go to the form yeah so here when we click on the button we want to what submit so you pass in on submit from react and then we pass in what formic the function to submit formic dot handle submit and that is it so with this in place let's go back to our application here login form here and then let me try to type in this email ad and then click login and now you see i have my input my values here so now i can send this request to my api to make the request so in the next video now that we have handled oh we are not done yet so next is assuming that a user refused to type in email as you can see it still logs right so we need to what is called client side validation that is why your package also comes into play so we want to make our life easier using your package so you're gonna tell us that hey this email is required therefore it cannot console log these ones so let's go ahead and then bring in the yop package to handle these errors so as the name implies so import star as yop from yop package 
and then all what we need is create your schema so that you remember in your back end we call something schema so a schema simply means that how you can create something out of something the path a way of creating something right so the schema here i'm going to tell us the validation schema tells you that hey if we say that this field is required you need to provide otherwise you cannot proceed on so let's call this one form validation and as you can see it's pretty easy to do and all what we need let's create a variable called form schema right a form schema and it can be anything and then here bring in the yop package and dot object right so this dot object we pass in as name implies object and then make sure this email here is the initial values used in this formic so it will bind together and here to validate we have what is called job is it a string yes the email field is a string it can be a number so you accept only number <coughs> or boolean right but in our case it's a string right and call as a function and on that we append what is called if it's a required field it says yes required and here you can pass in your custom message and say that hey buddy email is required so here email is required and the same thing applies to password right so password also going to be password is a string right and requires can see tab 9 gives me this nice auto import so the last thing is we need to map this one to our formic so here inside this formic i'm going to pass in a one more argument here and call this one validation schema and then we map it to our form schema that is it so with this being in place now let's go back to our application and then check the console here all right sorry check the console here so let me clear the console here one more time make it bigger for you to see so when i remove i didn't provide email and i clear you see that it doesn't console log it means that it's required field and if i remove the password field it doesn't but if i provide email and it's email field so let me provide a valid email and then as you can see now it, it console if i remove the password it doesn't console log so now it means it's working but let's display something to the user that hey user this field is required that is why as if you see the form i have commented some sections so on each input field we see a half error message here and then all what we need is on comment this back and then this is just a, a bootstrap class Mr. danger and inside you bring in so let me start from scratch for you to see all right what i'm doing here okay so here let's display this error here so on this formic right formic dot touched if it's touched right if the email field is touched and there is some errors so in operator if it is touched and formic dot errors dot email then display that so let's check it out and see now let's cut let's remove that so i think i have zero here what are coming from the zero is coming from where mm -mm -mm. I don't know where this zero number is coming from okay so let's try i will see where it's coming from okay so let's let's remove this field and then let's send wow it's giving me that message zero so whilst let me uncomment back and see why that zero is gone so why is zero property here okay oh sorry supposed to be double n operator okay so let's check it out now if i remove this one and then send as you can see email is required if i remove the past so now let me show you what it means about the on blur now let's remove this one and when i click on it i move my mouse as you can see it tells me that email is required so let's do the same thing for the password so let me remove this comment one here now as you can see it's working 
so the password is going to be the same thing right so let's uncomment this one back and in the same process all what you need is change the field if the password field is touched and there's errors on the password so let's remove this one too and then there we go right so let's refresh it let's refuse to provide the password field and then give me this one and now console log okay guys so now i'm going to use this pattern a lot in the registration and creating income and expenses so the next video now our form is ready we are going back we are working on the front end though so we are going to integrate redux most importantly redux toolkit